How to attack an FRQ. Teachers call the, uh, the essay portion of the AP Psych Test FRQs, or free response questions. There are two of them, and you have 50 five zero minutes to answer them both. And the FRQs are one-third of the overall grade, so each question is going to be one-sixth of the overall grade. Points are given for correct responses, but not taken away for incorrect or inaccurate material. The only way you would lose points is if one part of your answer contradicts another part. Think through the answer before starting to write. Do this by writing an outline or notes in the test question booklet. Feel free to write on it. Jot down notes, circle words, do whatever you need to do to help you formulate the response to your question. Don't be afraid to cross a phrase or a whole sentence out if you need to on your response. That's no big deal. The readers want to be able to give you points. We're not looking for style, we're looking for content. But do write in complete sentences. This, the readers need a subject verb sentence. Do not outline in your test booklet. Do not bullet point your answer. You must use complete sentences. Structure the answer following the structure of the question. If you can, go in that order. It makes it easier for us as readers to find the appropriate response. Be as complete as you can, be as complete as possible, but keep to the point. Watch the time. Don't get caught, got short rather, on essay number two. You want to make sure that you have enough time to score as many points as you possibly can. There are going to be two FRQs. One is likely to be from one or, one or two units, and methodology is frequently there. So experiments, correlational studies, statistics, independent, dependent variables, those things are often there. And then the second FRQ is thematic. It takes an idea that spans across many units, and there are going to be five, six, seven terms. And then the question is going to be, how does each connect to the theme, or what is an example of that term as it applies to the theme that is being mentioned in the FRQ? So this is a pretty predictable pattern that the, the, the ETS has gotten into. So an example of the first type of FRQ. And this is, this, is one, this is an old question from one of my own class exams. Your task is to discuss the role of forgetting in your life. When you were in the fifth grade, you knew all the capitals of all 50 states. Now you cannot recall them. Part A, describe the theories that attempt to explain why you forgot the information, decay and interference theory, and amnesia, retrograde and interrograde. And then B, apply each theory as an explanation of why you would be unable to recall the 50 states. So here I'm asking for both concept and application. I'm asking for both definitions or descriptions of the theories in part A, and then part B, I'm asking for the examples, the connections, the clarification of do they really understand what each term means. Because anybody can memorize. The thinkers are able to apply those ideas uh, to the scenario that's given. The second type of question is going to be a blah 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 scenario. The issue here is going to be time or space or thinking or problem solving or social interaction or memory or some other topic that can span multiple units. Then they're going to give you a list of terms. Again, it could be four, five, six, seven, eight terms. And the idea is to take those terms and connect them to the scenario that the FRQ states. That's the key connection. Do that, and you can score as many points as you possibly can out of the six, seven, eight, nine qu uh, points that you can get for that question. In summary, relax. Follow those steps and answer as many points as you can. The readers are trying to give you points. Make it easy for them. How do you do that? Make sure that each term is its own paragraph. This is not an English essay. It's okay to have one sentence paragraphs. It's okay to have two sentence, three sentence paragraphs. Make it easy for the readers to find the answer. Do not put your FRQ all in one big paragraph. Can you? Yes. Will it help you? No. Uh, do readers go slow and try to find your answers? Yes. But again, do you want to make your essay scorable or do you just want to spew words out onto the paper? Be okay with not knowing every term in the FRQs. A lot of people will freak out when they say, Oh my gosh, I didn't know, I didn't know what, uh, what, what, that, what the term was. That's okay. Your, uh, your goal is to score as many points as you can on the FRQ, not to ace it. 
do your best. Just try to score your best. And yes, that smiley face is me smiling at you. And of course, the rubric that the readers use is not made beforehand. They read hundreds of sample essays at the reading prior to all the readers getting there. And then they create the rubric. So the rubric is based on the responses that the students give. So relax, just do the best you can, and you're going to do just fine on the AP Psych FRQs.